Hey, it's Tone here again from V Artifacts. And here's my buddy Clem Clone. He loves watching 3D movies, but he's really starting to hate those funny colored glasses. And so we need to give him a hand today. What he'd really like to do is to use polarized glasses like this, or some of these nice shutter glasses that come with his new Blu-ray 3D player. The trouble is, a lot of his favorite movies are never going to come out on 3D Blu-ray. They were always set up for these funny colored glasses. They're called anaglyph, and Clem here doesn't like that. So we're going to help him out. We're stuck with all of these anaglyph 3D movies. And a lot of these old movies, the prints don't exist except in Anaglyph, and the studios aren't interested in re-releasing them. What we're going to try to do today is show you how to convert your own. We're going to use a couple of free tools, AVI Synth, Virtual Dub Mod, and some extra codecs. Let's take a look at an easy case first, a rip from a Blu-ray disc of Bob's Big Break. It's 1080p. Here's a little bit of stuff I preset up, and it's all driven by a simple scripting system that's used by AVI Synth. And so we're going to bring up the script editor. And actually, our scripts come in two sections. One is a invariant part that never changes. It's got all the code to do everything you need, but then there's a parameter part where you set all the things that you want to do in your video conversion. And you'll have one of these for each of the video files you want to convert. Let's take a look at the actual parameters and talk about what they do. Remember, we're starting with an anaglyph video. So what we're going to do first is tell it the name of the anaglyph file, where it is on your disk drive. I'm using MKV files here, Matroska files, but you could use AVI, Windows Media. Um, second file is whatever video file we want to use, where we want to pull the, just the color information out of. And in this case, we're really lucky because Bob's Big Break is distributed in both 2D and in 3D, and so we have this nice 2D version with all the color there. Even though the 3D version is anaglyph, it's got um, both green and magenta encoding on it. And just as a separate naming, although we're using the same file, we've got a monoscopic version of this, and it's going to turn out that this, the monoscopic version, is the left eye view. It's the perfect representation of the left eye view. So we're in this case, we only have to reconstruct the right eye view. And then lastly, the file name for where we want to pull the sound from. And we'll pull it from the 2D version of the video, but you could probably pull it from the 3D. It's fine. Um, this script handles either red cyan anaglyph or green magenta. I know that this movie is green magenta, having looked at it. Um, so we'll select GM rather than RC. And then you know, maybe we already have one eyes version, as we talked about. And so there's a parameter here that says is mono. And we've chosen mono left, meaning that the left eye view comes from our monoscopic file, the 2D version. We could set it to mono right if we knew that our 2D version was really the right eye view, or we could set it to mono none, meaning we don't have a 2D version and we're going to have to create both eye views out of the anaglyph video. Um, we have the ability to swap eyes in case you wanted to look at it cross-eyed or parallel viewed. For some reason you thought that the eyes the arrangement of the images of the eyes was backwards. Um, the answer is yes or no. In this case, it's going to be no. Now, we're going to output a single video file, and we can output with AVI Synth, either Windows Media, AVI, Matroska, um, a variety of formats. But the arrangement of the stereo views, we could do them side by side where the left image is on the left side, right image is on the right side, or we can do side by side where the right is on right image is on the left side and the left image is on the right side, or we can do top and bottom where the images are stacked um, either left on the top or left 
on the bottom, your choice. Um, and there's um, parameters here. It could be SBS left first, SBS right first, TB left top, or TB right top. Um, and it's explained here in the comments. So you can output as you want. Um, do you want to resize the output? Now remember, this is 1080p video. It's pretty high resolution. And so we might choose to make it lower or put lower resolution. And we can either answer yes or no. I'll make this one a yes just to make life a little easier. And then just below that, we can set those actual dimensions. And the dimensions are for whatever um, horizontal or vertical stacking that you use. We're doing a horizontal arrangement here, so I'm making it quite wide, 500 pixels wide and only 200 pixels tall, which corresponds to this area up here. The color information what we're doing, of course, is we're taking the anaglyph, separating out, in this case it's the right side, just the magenta part. We're converting the magenta just to flat black and white, and then we're re-adding the color in that we find from our best color representation, which in this case is the monoscopic 2D version. Um, because things are shifted a little bit, we may need to blur the color. And this is how it's done um, through this decimate horizontal, decimate vertical. Um, it's, again, in percentage. So what happens is the color image is shrunk down to 3% of its normal size and then blown back up to its full size in the horizontal dimension. That's the parameters we've got set up here. Uh, and in the vertical dimension, it's only uh, shrunk to 6% and then blown back up. So it's fairly blurred. The great thing about Virtual Dub Mod, you can just put in a new parameter in the text editor. You hit the F5 key, and it will load up the new version of the script. So I've opened another AVI synth file, an AVS file, but this is a more of a troublesome movie. First of which is that there's leakage between the two eyes. And so if we look over here, this is the 2D version. And it's perfect. It's nice. These bars are run up and down, nice and straight, sharp, clear as can be. Whereas on the right side, which is reconstructed from our anaglyph, you can see these faint white stripes running up and down here. And that's actually ghosting from the other channel, from the green side of the image. And we don't like that. Let's get rid of that. And we do it in two steps. Um, one is subtract out a little bit of the left eye image um, to see if we can't counteract the leakage by subtracting out just the amount that we think was leaked. And so I'm going to choose 10% right down here um, in leak correct R for leak correct right. Uh, we'll hit the F5 key and see how it updates. And as you can see, it's considerably better. The next problem is along the edge of the leak, there's a fringe. It's a video encoding issue that we do a slight horizontal blurring of right image. And I'm going to change this from a 1, which means no blurring, to a 2, which means a modest amount of blurring. And now you can see it's much reduced, and the, the, even though it's just a, the right eye image is a bit softer. Um, and so lastly, we want to look at maybe color balancing. So if we look at this, we can see that the 2D version, the colors are fairly well balanced and saturated, whereas the one we reconstructed, you can see things are a little bright, a little washed out. So I want to bring the brightness down. And so I'm going to pull out about a value of 50 from the brightness. I think we need more contrast, and so I'm going to go 1.35 for the contrast here. And I think the image is kind of desaturated, so I'll add a bit of saturation, change it from 1.0, which is no change, to 1.3, which is going to make it more saturated. And I'll hit my F5 key, and we process, and now you can see that things are much better. This red shirt looks kind of reddish. Maybe it's a tad bright, but it's um, not a bad guess. I think that gives you a flavor for this. Certainly all the technical details are not explained here, but you can take a look at vartifacts.com and get a detailed technical breakdown and download all the open source code that we've developed. Until next time, we'll see you.